are fighting a war 30 years in the future. You see time travel in movies. This is a different take on it. Why don't we just jump back to earlier in the war? The jump link doesn't work that way. The philosophy of time travel in this film is that time is like a river flowing in one steady direction. And this jump link places two rafts on that river of time. So if I jump 40 years ahead and spend 10 days, when I jump back, it'll be 10 days from now. In the movie, we're all kind of like getting to know each other, getting ready to like train a little bit more and then jump and then like all of a sudden. All right, people, let's go. This is not a trip. Ready or not, we had to go. Let's go. Hey, hey, let's hey, go. hey, what's going on? I thought we had seven days. The world doesn't end on a schedule. There's something about time travel, strangely, that's very conducive to telling a story of a family. Like the best action movies or sci-fi movies, at its core, it's a, a story about family and about love. Dan has a really complicated relationship with his father. His dad's an old school kind of tough guy. You got a new accessory, huh? You too. It does me 50 cal. It's cool. Yeah, it does the job. Dan, there's something that he wants to do with his life, but he's not quite sure how to get to this version of himself that he dreams of being. We see the devastation that this draft has caused to this family. In the middle is this extraordinary young daughter. She really likes science. Dad teaches science, and he is an inspiration for her to be a scientist. I want to be the best, like you are at science. They know that if I get drafted, there's a likelihood that I'm not coming back. But the nature of this draft is that if I don't go, if I run, they'll take my wife. So in a way, this is one of the only ways that Dan knows how to show up for his family. I want you to know something. I will be back. <laughs> Our intention was to blend It's a Wonderful Life with sci-fi and sci-fi horror. Even though it's this crazy alien action movie, it's relatable in a lot of ways. It's a story about fighting the enemy on the outside as well as the enemy on the inside. It really is about what it means to love your family, but also want to fulfill your destiny. I was trying to save my daughter. If I got to save the world to save her, then I'm damn sure going to do it. This is a film about people living in present day who are drafted to fight a war that's happening in the future. I play Dan Forrester, who feels like he's destined to do something extraordinary. Dan's a, a family man just trying to get by and do the right thing. It takes this global event for Dan to realize his destiny. I'm not a hero. I was trying to save my daughter. The draft is taking people out of their everyday lives to be soldiers, most of whom are not equipped to be soldiers. The idea of a bunch of ordinary people who the audience could relate to seemed really interesting. Anybody can get drafted, like anybody. Bus drivers, truck drivers, it's a real gumbo of, of people. That everyday people are having to fight. I found it really exciting. What you think you know about basic training does not apply. You will not march, crawl, or climb. Oh, I was kind of looking forward to that. Dan does have combat experience, but he's surrounded by a lot of people who do not, and he sees it as his responsibility to try to get them through the war. How do you know how to do all this stuff, man? Long story. Are you ex-military? Yeah. Kind of a short story, I guess. My character, she's a total badass, and her job is to help recruit soldiers to fight the war. We are ready, but very reluctant. Why don't we have pictures or videos that you know, would help us to know what we're up against? The consensus was if the public saw what they face when they reached the future, it would become virtually impossible to fill that hanger. Next time someone asks that, you should probably just lie. There's something really fun, vibrant, exciting in the idea that these are regular people being thrust into battle with this overpowering alien force. What's up, everybody? It's Chris Pratt. I'm on the set of The Tomorrow War. I'm telling you, it's going to be so awesome. I've been given permission by the executive producer, myself, to give you a sneak peek. Let's take a look. Watch, in post, this is going to be amazing. Look, look, I'm a, a genie. Come on. Over here is our actual set where I'm filming fan interactions for me. That's what it's all about. You know, it's all about the fans. This particular fan won a radio contest. I think he's kind of nervous, but he has nothing to be nervous about. I'm a regular guy. Okay, come on. 
Why don't we go meet my co-star, Savon Strahovski. You know her from The Handmaid's Tale. She's extraordinary. Come on, come meet her. I know that we've been told that we're not allowed to share anything, right. but I think we should just blow right through that and, and spoil some major plot points. No, 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 okay. no, no. No, you're not allowed to say any of that. Okay. All right, so uh, this is one of our practical sets. I'm here with Sam Richardson. This is uh, intended to be Miami uh, in the future. The whole premise of the film is we're at war with a force that is not human. You know, things are not looking good for the humans, but luckily we've got Chris and Sam. Uh, you know what that means. Probably gonna save the day. You'll just have to wait and see. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Jump on, bro. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> we are on the largest glacier in Europe. Bigger than even the glaciers of Greece, Italy, or Spain. We are in Iceland, and it is true. Yes, sir. Greece is making a movie. Oh, other truths. This ice cave goes, we've scouted it, it goes down 3,000 miles and it ends up in Santa Monica underneath the pier. Unreal. There's nothing better than destroying beautiful scenery with a stupid joke. 
Well, there's a couple things that are maybe better than that. Mm -hmm.